Right there. That's the yellow van, baby. Homeless people living there on occasion. I think the whole underbelly has been torn out, taken in for scrap. Sometimes, I imagine Dylan, if he's relegated past the couch, when in trouble with the wife, you gotta live in it. And I tell you what, I'm here at Noble Records right now, and uh, you better bring a goddamn tote bag. One of these things here at my own yard. Tote bag, t t t well, can't even say it's a tote bag. Cause when you go in here and you get records, they come out bare ass naked without a tote bag. There ain't no bags up in this piece. There's people waiting to get in. He ain't even here yet. And we're at open. Okay, so a uh, couple things about the intro. One that was filmed on April Fools, on April 1st. Uh, second, Dylan showed up within 30 seconds of me hitting stop on the record uh, button. And he gave Mr. Weinbender a lovely uh, tote bag, compliments of Record Safari. Granted, it didn't have noble records on it. But, um, yeah. Anyway. Got a lot of records here. Um, and, yeah, Winebender was in town. And so John and I got up with him for a dig at Noble Records. Uh, and some great barbecue at Rock Store Barbecue in uh, Stallings, North Carolina, just down the road. Uh, fantastic day. Um, so, yeah. A uh, couple things come in here that we're going to show first. Um, rare 7-inch uh, Prince Jasbo uh, School on the A-side on Bongo Man. Uh, Rasta Don't Stop No One by the Stingers on the B-side. Uh, got a local guy here that deals in rare 45s as far as reggae is concerned. I guess he's got some source in Jamaica or whatnot. But yeah, Jamaican original. Um, the Prince Jasbo cut is dope. Um, but the, the B-side is, yeah. It's just, they just, it's almost like they're just kind of going through the motions, the stingers. That's, it's, it's good. It's not, it's, it ain't, it ain't, the Prince Jasbo cut is where it's at on that. So, rare one to find here in Charlotte. Um. Speaking of rare, uh, as you know, I collect ESP disc, and this is one I never thought I'd find, and it popped up ridiculously cheap on uh, eBay. Some somebody in Michigan had this copy, and it was a weird listing because they had it listed as red vinyl, and there is a red vinyl reissue of this, uh, recent. Um, and so I was a little hesitant about buying it, but all the all the photos had the original cover and original record, so. I didn't know what was up if they had gotten stock photos from somewhere or taken photos from another record or what, but it was just they just listed it wrong, and uh, it was the in, indeed the original pressing of uh, Peter Lemmer Quintet, Local Color. Um, this is one of my favorite ESP disc records. Um, this is a, some amazing, amazing songs. Peter Lemmer, uh, fantastic free jazz pianist. Um, John Sermon's involved on here on baritone sax, bass, clarinet, and soprano, and he just wails on this, uh, as well as Nasser Ahmad Khan on tenor, Tony Reeves bass, and John Heisman on drums. This is a super group of UK musicians at the time. Um, an amazing album, 1968. Uh, the owner of ESP Disc sat on this recording for quite a while. It, it never got put out when it should have. Um, but Flowville that ends side one is one of my favorite jazz songs I've ever heard in my life. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah, Peter Lemmer Quintet, Local Color. A huge, huge find for the ESP Disc collection. Um, unbelievable. Hey, let's see, next, um, found this record store in San Diego sent this um, 100 Flowers and I'm not even sure the title it's it's the original pressing I think this band used to be known as the Urinals um, 
and so this is later on um, when they changed the name. Love the guitars on this. Good vocals too, but the, the guitars are phenomenal. Um, this is going in a whole new direction. Yeah. And I think I helped uh, Vinyl Richie find a copy of this. They, they, re they reissued this for Record Store Day, and I guess it was a tough one to come across. Um, and Lunchbox had a copy. I advised him, and I think he picked it up, but I can't remember for sure. Let me know if that's the case, Richie. Um, my memory's shot. Got this record um, from Spain, from B Core, uh, the new Ramon, A Proposito de Garfunkel, um, the first release uh, that Ramon Rodriguez did after leaving Medi. Uh, solo effort, um, a lot of the backing band from the band Standstill. This is an absolutely gorgeous LP. Uh, one of my favorites from, from Ramon. Um, yeah, this is sung in Catalan. Uh, beautiful guitar work. Uh, Singer-songwriter uh, type stuff, but a great, just such a great backing band. Um, yeah, this is phenomenal. The new Ramon, A Proposito de Garfunkel. And it's a limited gold pressing. I'll show you. It's it's pretty nice pressing. Um, and there was one ish, one copy of this that had a golden ticket inside. If you were lucky enough to get it, uh, Ramon would actually play a private uh, concert at your home, um, as long as you're in the peninsula, uh, Spain or Portugal. Um, and then t you know free tickets to the Madrid and or Barcelona gig that's upcoming beautiful piece of vinyl this sounds really really good um, the bass really comes through amazingly on this but yeah Ricky Lovato uh, on uh, drums uh, he's from Standstill uh, Ricky Faulkner on piano um, and various other instruments also from Standstill this is part of his backing band phenomenal LP See if I can leave a link to uh, some of that. Um, we got called out by John Six Inch Pianist about showing the funk in the VC. Well, got a short dig in at uh, Lunchbox um, before the trip up to Noble. Um, I think this was earlier in that week. Uh, I got a lot of catching up to do here with these records that I picked up. Um, show you guys and gals uh so this one's parliament uh glory holla stupid or pin the tail on the funky and this was a good deal it's got some this dude ken bryant wrote his name on it he wrote some funny shit on the inside too um this is a really dope parliament album funky as hell bass kicks and this has got the cartoon on the inside it's uh one of these that, and it's kind of like a, almost it reads like a book i don't know if you can see that but yeah it's a tough one to show but um really good um odd beginning of the first song but it, it gets going and then it, get, it gets going I guess Luke told me that uh, Parliament's going to be, or Funkadelic, one of the, however they're going by right now, is going to be in Charlotte soon. So that'll be crazy. Uh, Fishbone opening. Um, I remember we had Center City Fest here years ago, and we had four bands um, on one stage, and I was there for all of that. It was Fishbone that opened, 311 followed that and then George Clinton and P-Funk and then it closed with Blue Oyster Cult. That was a hell of a great gig. Uh, Fishbone killed it. Um, so to the quick lunchbox dig from a while back. Um, Emahoy Segi Miriam Gabru um, Spilt Eigen Compositionen um, Brilliant uh, pianist um I remember where she was from um, Ethiopia I believe um, I could be wrong on that but 
she just recently passed away, I think at 99 years old. Um, and these are long lost recordings that I think Mississippi Records put out. I have the other record with the striped cover, really nice looking record. Uh, the sound quality is terrible on that. Um, it, and there's a lot of uh, notes and discogs with other people that had similar pressing issues. I talked to Scott at Lunchbox. He doesn't believe it's a pressing issue. He believes it's a source material issue. Um, I mean, this is originally on a, on a 10 inch, these records, in Africa way back. And to even find one is, is, is like going on an archeological dig um, so maybe it could have just been their source material and it's, you know, it just has the crackles like you get if you found it yourself, you know. Anyway, pick this one up. Beautiful, uh, solo piano. Uh, The Homeless Wanderer, I think, is, uh, a song dedicated to her brother who she lost at an early age. Fantastic record, uh, if you like. Not, I don't want to say the word minimal. I, I don't know. Uh, just good, really good piano vibes, cosmic vibes. Um, speaking of cosmic vibes, uh, right now no one does it better than Angel Bat Dawid uh, from Chicago. This is a seven inch, and it, of course that's a painting of Sun Ra there. Um, I love this little seven inch transition east. Uh, phenomenal songs. Uh, no space for us on the B-side. Uh, this was actually recorded in Brazil uh, in 2020. And I just got around to picking this up. It's on International Anthem Recording Company. And speaking, uh, and we'll keep it going with Angel Bat. Uh, I know Alex got to see her in a park in, I think, Pasadena last year. And she was, you know, dressed up like Sun Ra and the whole bit. But uh, Requiem for Jazz is the new release. Um... Sorry for the glare. This one's this one's just more phenomenal stuff. A huge group, um, including Marshall Allen from Sun Ra, and another. There's another player from Sun Ra in in the mix. Marshall Allen, of course, is 98 right now, but still killing it on the horn, on the sax. Um, so Requiem for Jazz, the new Angel Bad Dog Weed on International Anthem Recording Company with the crazy Ob strip. Is Black Classical Funeral Mass marries art and orchestra with beatwork, chorus, and aria in mournful ritual to grieve the death of jazz and instigate the proclamation of great black music. They really hit you with those, uh, on those obi strips. Um, so to the dig uh, at Noble Records with John and Mr. Eric Weinbender. Um, well, actually, I got one in the mail here I'll include in this. Um, when I first got there, uh, Dylan brought out a stack of uh, 45s that he'd had behind the counter for quite a while. I think he, he had gotten them in periodically with his shipments from Zambia. And these are in rough shape. Uh, so these were really cheap. I think like five bucks a piece. Maybe one was ten. Um... And he let me go through them and pick what I wanted out, which is very nice of Dylan. Um, and I picked out Blackfoot Millie. This is their first ever release on 7-inch. Uh, great, great rock tune. Um, really dig this one. And it, it plays through without skipping. Um, a lot of crackle and pop and all that. I cleaned these up as best I could. But, um, you know, these are all original Zambian 7-inches. It's a really cool to pick these up. Um, here's one, Ngozi Family. Um, and I'm not even sure the cuts on this. Rhoda, parts one and two. On the Telefix Limited, I think, label on this one, which I'd never seen before. Uh, the next one is Paul Ngozi, uh, Nashupwa Bueno, part one and two. Um... This is on the Kariba label. The label's faded. It was green at one point. But this one cleaned up okay. Um, yeah. Great guitarist, Paul Ngozi. Some some dope Zamrock jams here. And then the 
last one I got out of the stack from Dylan, uh, Mike Neone, um, Wenye Niwanji, parts one and two on the Kalimba label. Just more dope Zambian vibes. Um, and then we'll show you this one. This one came in the mail from um, Mono Records in LA. Uh, another Blackfoot 7-inch, a big G lady on the A, and uh, Mwiwa Seka Benenu on the B. Phenomenal Zamrock. Stoked. I didn't have any Blackfoot in the collection, so now I have two 7-inches. Um, and then I picked this 7-inch up at Noble because of seeing it on What's in My Bag on Amoeba. Dave Grohl picked this out to give to one of his uh, crew. Um, he, he went through and showed a bunch of 7-inches that he thought was fun. He thought these were fun, and this one's crazy. Uh, urine stains across Virginia. There's a guy urinating in his chair um, with you know, piss-colored vinyl. On the black lung label. It's a bunch of uh, punk, garage, D.C., Virginia uh, area um, stuff. Just crazy ass band names. Um, black Lung being out of Norfolk. Uh, there's the one that uh, Dave Grohl mentioned. Uh, Candy Snatchers, Ass, Gas, or Crack is the name of the song. <laughs> there's a band called Hillbilly Werewolf with a song heading on a southbound train. The Whorehounds, Stalker, Dirty Fingers, Bad Lover is the name of the song. Um, yeah, this is this is a fun one. Uh, little punk seven inch here in Stains across Virginia. Uh, sticking with punk, uh, I picked this up. Iggy Pop and James Williamson, Kill City. Uh, this is a white uh, German pressing online records. Uh, from I think the original year could be could be a reissue, but it's in beautiful shape. Uh, of course, Iggy and James from the Stooges, um, and I've been meaning to pick this up forever. Uh, finally found a copy from Dylan, and then I got an original of Unwound. Uh, this is a 12-inch on Kill Rock Stars from 1997, um, and this is in my I think these songs are in my box set, but. Like I said before, I'm going to pick up any original Unwound that I find. It's got the light at the end of the tunnel is a train. 10 minute, 10 second jam on the B side, which is killer. Um, let's see, next, uh, Eric came back into town after going to his, uh, to do that live stream up north of here. Um, and met me at uh, Repo Records for a quick dig uh, on his way back to Greenville. And my friend Brad came out and met us, and he picked up some records too. And um, Eric found a few good records. Uh, I'm sure I'll show you those at a later date. Um, and I went to the Country Wall and checked out a couple of the artists that I don't have any records of, and this was one. And this one stuck out just because... Mazzy has championed this record over and over. Uh, and this is a mint original copy, still in the original shrink, with the original price sticker of $2.89 on it, so I couldn't pass. Um, they were asking 6 bucks for it, and Steve gave it to me, I guess for bringing the guys in and drumming up a bunch of business. But uh, the Cold Hard Facts of Life from Porter Wagner. And that, yeah... It, that that song about him catching his wife, you know, following the guy from the liquor store is freaking classic as shit. Um, and he, you know, the end of the song with him, uh, you know, talking about pulling out a knife and ending up in the in the slammer. Um, phenomenal uh, stuff. Of course, Porter Wagner did a lot with uh, Dolly Parton, uh, and even my mom was talking about it with me the other night. So this was a cool one to find. It's in f fantastic shape. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful copy. Uh, someone took really good care of this record on RCA Victor. Mono Dyna Groove. Beautiful copy. So that was all I grabbed at Repo. I had just been in there prior, so I'd kind of already picked out what I wanted out of there. 
earlier in another week. Got uh, what, two more records here that came in in the mail. Uh, this one I, I ordered on March 11th, and it just showed up yesterday. Um, there's a bunch of issues with permanent records, but uh, it got here. Um, Catherine Ribeiro and Alps. Um, numero two. Uh, this is an original France pressing on, I'm not sure what label this is on. Festival? Yeah, Festival. Um, this is dope stuff. Um, her vocals remind me of this, this, you know, that San Francisco scene. Uh, Grace Slick a little bit. Um, it's definitely trippy stuff. Um, I dig it, though. This is, this is a great one. They had a French collection on consignment. And uh, this is one I picked out that was a uh, really good price, low price. Um, they had another one of uh, Catherine's records that they wanted near 100 bucks for, so I passed on it. But, um, yeah, stoked to have that. I don't have any, this is the only record I have on that label. And then to close out, I've got a, an amazing private press record. Uh, I got this from uh, Carolina Soul, really cheap, like $13. And it's a double LP. Uh, Andrew White Quartet, uh, live at the New Thing. Um, this recorded, most of it was recorded in Washington, D.C. In, in two venue, two different venues and compiled here and along with a show in Buffalo, New York as well. Um, yeah, I didn't know too much about these musicians, but uh, the write-ups, actually on the record itself, the descriptions uh, sold me on this. I'll show you the label. Real quick, uh, there's two different versions of this. There's one with gold label and one with white, and these are the white, with the gold print. Uh, and these records are just in immaculate shape. They look unplayed. Um, beautiful. Some of it straight ahead jazz. Some of it can get going and get out there just a little bit. But um, Andrew White, alto and tenor. Um, I don't know any of the other musicians, but um, the write-ups on the back are phenomenal. Ron Carter, uh, his arrangements are excellent, his personnel well-chosen, song selection is perfectly balanced, and he's a bitch of a player. That came from Ron Carter. And then there's, you know, Wayne Shorter uh, write-up on here. It says, the music in this album has that straight-ahead thing you kind of miss in most of today's recordings. The musicians seem to be saying there ain't nothing wrong with playing for yourself sometime. So yeah, I, I saw that in the listing um, and jumped on that. So that, I believe, is everything for this particular video. Um, stay tuned. Premium Sound reopened. Peace.